The recording has started. Hi, Nick. Hi, Lori. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so tonight was actually supposed to be a wine writer's wrap-up of um, post Parker World of Wine. Like, yeah. what mm -hmm. are we going to do? Super interesting topic. Like, without Parker. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know if, if the world can survive without him. Um, but apparently, either it wasn't a good topic to the other people, <laughs> <laughs> or it just is a busy Thursday. So, um, who knows? So, I bet I'm here. So. I know. And you know, you know how. You know how That's I love you. That's appearance. <laughs> yeah. And it was such a pleasant surprise as I got the text, is there room? Well, right. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's always room for you. There's uh -huh. always room for you. Um, so we're going to switch this over to the wacky world of wine. Yeah. Um, and what better to start with than shutting down the wine industry today? Closing, closing the electrical or whatever you call it for 800,000 businesses or consumers or whatever. Um, way to go, PG&E. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, it went out yesterday, like early yesterday morning. I think they started at midnight on Wednesday morning, just cutting power. Um you should see the sad, sad looks on people's faces in Napa Valley. <laughs> Very, you know, it, it was, and then it became kind of like the Hunger Games for wineries of who's open and who's going to be able to provide service to people. Um, I mean, we were able to provide great tastings outside, porta potties. I mean, what top notch. World class Napa Valley service. You know those people who have flown in from around the globe. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Are really are really getting the 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 highfalutin you know treatment there. But you know what the funny thing is, Yountville, so like just south of the middle of the valley, all had electricity, and. Mm. You know, it, I, Thomas Keller has steak in PG&E because all of his restaurants are there, but I'm just yeah. the entire town of Yonville had electricity. So, so I don't know if you were aware, but um, in Paso, we have, uh, well, we have a few, but there is a golf club, right, uh, that has started a women's only uh, practice time or whatever, and some schmuck of a guy is suing them <laughs> because he's a guy and he can't get in there. So can can the wineries that are being shut down by PG and E mm -hmm. sue for bias that all these Yountville wine? You know, like is the wind that different? <laughs> Their wind is richer than our wind. Um, <laughs> no, you know, the funny thing about it is you can't sue for this at all oh. because it's, it's safety. And, again, better than burning. I, I do agree with that. So kudos PG&E as opposed to mowing down all of the dry grass. <laughs> Just cut power, but safety first. Safety first. I mean, granted, I have relatives very close, my sister, who works for PG&E, so I have You can pull strings? You can pull strings? Yeah, right? Um, actually, my power stayed on at home, so maybe. <laughs> I was in a very small pocket of Santa Rosa. Um, actually, I live in, unfortunately, the, the neighborhood, one of the neighborhoods that got decimated by the 17 fire. Um, but our little pocket didn't get turned off. So that was nice. So all of my wine stays cold. <laughs> so may, maybe they, this is so bad, but maybe they felt bad and That's figured. I, everyone has said the same thing. 
like add insult to injury. So um, we got to keep our power. All right, all right. So with that being said, are you drinking? I know you've got studying later today. Are you drinking now? I am not drinking now. Um, I actually have to gym in a few. Um, but tonight I will be having the 2016 Chetamon with the Bill. Oh, very nice, very nice. We're low for Merlot month, but yes. maybe that's going to be tomorrow. All right. Well, I'm drinking Ooh. a cab. Ooh. What cow are you drinking? I have a sample from Santa Julia. Oh. Is it so Julia or oh, Julia? Julia. Oh, see, I'm so bad. Julia. That's, that is true. You know, it is from Argentina, so I must put my little accent on. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, Santa, very Santa nice. Julia. Um, it's actually very nice. I do and I am enjoying, and it is made from organic grapes, which nice. is very nice. Um, but I was having a little conversation with another winemaker about organic and sulfur, and that went off the rails of of why people love organic and don't understand sulfur. Um, <laughs> well, there's definitely organic grapes, and then there's organic wine, and so that just opens a whole other we could be like Alice and go down that rabbit hole. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a big rabbit hole to go down, big rabbit yeah. hole to go down. But um, so we're going we're gonna to start off our little wacky world. Uh, well, I guess we already started off our little wacky like, world. Wine country? Um, yeah. with, with the wackiness of the wine country. But um, I have some stories for us, but the most recent – other than the PG&E, <laughs> right. the most recent is about this little wine scandal that gets you into college. <laughs> <laughs> so if only I knew that if my parents owned a winery, you know, you know, I mean, I, we're Hollywood actors. You know, yeah. But, yeah, if, if you were a vintner, and you had an inept child who can't tie their shoes, um, then yes, you too can get your child into college. You too. And I do believe it was, uh, was I, I shouldn't talk out of circle, was it USC? I believe so. I believe right? so. So here's a question. Is USC getting penalized for this? You know, I actually don't know if the schools themselves, maybe the faculty or the admissions people, um, for this particular case, I sure hope they got some nice bottles because given that particular vint vintner, um, if somebody just said, oh, here, here's a case, I would totally just admit them to college. Absolutely. Sign her up, man. Put them on an athletic team, do whatever was necessary. Right. So... So for those who are listening who are not quite familiar with what we are talking about, um, there was a big brouhaha a few months ago, <laughs> I love that word, um, where some rather rich parents were basically bribing colleges to fake their, stu their children's SAT scores and allowing them to get entrance into some major schools. And under false pretenses. So, um, Lovely, Laughlin, um, not to mention yes. names, but yes. Yes, Olivia not to Hoffman. name drop. Yes. Um, but the one we are talking about, he is the fifth parent who was sentenced to the college admission scandal. Augustine, and you'll know how to say his name better than I do, Hunis, yes. H U N E E U S. He received a five-month prison sentence and agreeing to pay three hundred oh for agreeing to pay three hundred thousand dollar bribe for his daughter's way into the University of Southern California. Now, if my memory serves correctly, USC has just gotten out of a football scandal. I mean, when you are a like a top tier school. Just like being at a top-tier winery, scandals will abound. They will. But, you know, 
if you just get out of a football scandal where people who have been admitted into the Hall of Fame have been removed out of the Hall of Fame, you might want to keep your nose clean for a wee little bit. Well, it's not their nose that was dirty. It was their lip and mouth. <laughs> their palate, that's their right. Their palate was a little red, a little purple. That's right. So, uh, Huniz has to pay $50,000, or, or he paid, I'm sorry, $50,000 to rig his daughter's SAT exam and was planning to pay another $250,000 to bribe her way into USC. But he was arrested before the deal went down. <laughs> but you know what? I, I really think he's been unfairly targeted. Um, he's not Hollywood royalty or, you know, um, an American favorite kind of actress. You know, he's just a lowly vintner out of Napa Valley. That's and good. it's just not fair that he got the toughest of all of the sentences. That is true. He did get the toughest. Um, so the other thing I think is funny is not only was he trying to rig her to get into the USC, but she was going there on an athletic scholarship for water polo. <laughs> Very difficult sport. It is. Who, if you've ever watched water polo, you have no clue what's going on. So it's, you know, it's... <laughs> It's, My nephew's and nieces play, and the fact that they could tread water and throw a ball at the same time is impressive. They do either on their own, so <laughs> it is impressive. But it's it's not as bad as field hockey, where the whistle is blown every five seconds and you have no clue what's going on. But <laughs> it, it is a sport that people can watch and really have no clue. But I mean, USC has quite a bit of sports, and I'm curious why they chose water polo to be the one they were going to rig. I mean, well, other than the fact that it couldn't be football anymore, you know. Cause. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I don't really know. Uh, water into wine, I'm not, there's something that's going along the, those lines. There you go. Water and wine. There you go. Now, I'm reading over this article from the New York Post, okay. uh, so you know it's spot on. Um, <laughs> he might have gotten the, the harshest penalty, but he was getting off cheap because Lori Laughlin paid $500,000. So does that mean that her daughter was more inept? I'm going to say yes, but also you have to think of the the cogs on the wine that was probably donated as well. Oh. You, see, you, you had just the cash donation, if you will, and then you had the wine on top of that. That is true, which is probably, you know, probably partially consumed already, so the evidence was not, it's you know. Already Right. If the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> it's amazing how we always return to that statement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, murder, wine, college, they all sports. Intertwined. 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 They are. They are. Um, I will say without saying the name of this winery, really kick-ass wine. Um, so I, I really do feel bad. Do you think this will have an impact on the winery? No, not at all. No, <laughs> do I? <laughs> it might boost it even more. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you are a wine club member, you get free tips on how to get your kid into college. Yeah. <laughs> For your anniversary gift, right? You get exactly. You get you get next you year's get SAT test into your fitness. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But I do agree. He got like the he got the worst penalty, and I know and like, it's really terrible. Yeah, look, I mean, it's really just a call here saying, hey. I love you. You're my kid. You're not very smart. You look athletic. 
So I'm going to get you into college. Like, you look I, good my, me. Parents, I mean, my parents paid my way into college. I mean, they paid my, my college, but I mean, I had to work my way to a state university. <laughs> You know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I kind of, I, I, I don't know the daughter, but they are actually being nice and not saying her name. Now, well, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's very easy to figure out her name. Um, Probably. <laughs> but the daughter of a famous vintner. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I kind of think I would be mortified. Um, like. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, I mean, I think you're mortified when you get caught, not... Well, nothing not, is if illegal. Caught, if you got in and was playing water polo or not, because you're just sitting on the fence, you're probably like, yeah, my dad's kick-ass. Like, he's pretty cool. Like, we fought the law and... And the, I won. <laughs> but, unfortunately, that's not how that's played out. Unfortunately, the law won. But you know, there's you can always drink your sorrows away. I, I don't mind. recommend that. That's not, you know, a professional statement of saying to you know drink if you're sad. But it does help. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. It does. Um, do you think? Do you think she would have had to sit on the bench of the water polo team? Yeah, I don't think she actually played water polo, or so one of the one of the kids like didn't play the sport that they were trying to get them into. So yeah, they would have just been bent. Um, but would she have to show up? Yeah, I'm sure she would have had to show up to at least you know get into the bathing suit or whatever, or um, you know they'd be in the team picture. For, like, there the, you the, go, the, right the smack dab in the center. She's the one holding the the water, the water polo. Ball. Ball. Yeah, the water polo ball. That's right. That's right. Right smack dab in the center. Yeah. It would be kind of funny if she went to the first day of practice and um, needed to be rescued in the water. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because I'm thinking, yeah, that would be funny, but it's also really sad. So it's not really. So, so you, I don't know if you know this or not, but I, I've coached boys swimming for, I don't know, 12 years before the, this bi-coastal thing, right? So, um, so I coach swimming. I swam competitively all my life, um, and there's been a few years where boys have come up to me and have they said, "Oh, you're the coach? Yes. Um, I want to try out. Great. What's which stroke do you swim? I swim underwater. <laughs> like, not an event, but good for you." Um, you know, um, or, or I've gotten, um, I want to try out, great, what stroke? Um, the one that you, you know, put your hands over your head. Okay. I think they meant the butterfly. The, I don't think they meant the butterfly. <laughs> but kudos on knowing the butterfly, that is my, that is my beloved stroke. That, that's, that's where these shoulders have come from. And this really, I've been curious about that for a few years now. I was like, where did she get those broad ass shoulders? And this and whole thing. Like the butterfly. The butterfly. The butterfly. And, and this reconstructed shoulder right here is all thanks to butterfly and probably softball. But. Well, you know what's good if you have pain like right here? Wine. Wine. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a good thing I drink lefty because I don't know if sometimes I, you know, before the surgery, I might not have been able to lift my arm up to, to drink. What is claws for? <laughs> that, that's only if you're drinking out of a Pringles can, though. That is true. That is true. Uh, that is true. All right. <laughs> so, as I said, um, I have I have a few stories that yeah. are not as um. Time, uh, I forget, I'm blanking on what word I want to say. Timely. Um, timely, <laughs> timely, as that is. Um, but uh, some of them I thought were kind of funny. Uh, okay. This one this one actually happened in 2007. So um, I don't even know where the hell I was in 2007. Um, mm. But I thought this was kind of funny. And the way it was written... Uh, in the summer of 2007, 
around the magical hour of midnight. <laughs> a pleasant patio dinner party was just winding down when things took a sudden turn oh, for the terrifying. Oh, oh, oh. The owner of the Washington, D.C. home had just gone for a night walk with his dog, leaving his six guests to enjoy a bottle of wine after dinner. First of all, six guests, one, one bottle more. of wine. There's already, some, something's already amiss here. <laughs> there you go, right? And when, when the guest, would, or when the host is like, oh, here, everyone, have this one bottle of wine. I'm going to leave and block the dog. I also would be a little suspicious of her. Who does that? Who does that? Right? But. I mean, I've poured in a few extras like that, but. <laughs> I have this bottle of wine. I'm going to go walk the dog. I'm going to walk the dog. I'm going to go get a pack of cigarettes. Exactly. <laughs> but you don't smoke. <laughs> so as he was walking the dog, unfortunately, he also left the back gate open. An uninvited stranger entered, approached the unsuspecting group, and took the youngest member hostage. Doesn't this sound like somebody who wants to be writing fiction but is stuck writing the the police report for a newspaper? Like that. <laughs> well, okay. It, it, how old was the old was the youngest of uh, age twenty one? I'm guessing it's an older group. It was like she's 46. Um, right. True. True. And what what's this say? What are the things that they put on the signs um, for the parents for the parents who give the alcohol to the kids, but they're responsible? Is that a thing in California? I think so. Because in New Jersey, I, I wasn't raised in a home where my parents fed underage children alcohol, so I wouldn't really know. In, in New Jersey, it is illegal. The parent can be held responsible if the kids drink at their house and then go do something. Oh yeah, I think that would be anybody. Oh, okay. yeah. all right. So we're gonna go with they're at least twenty-one. Okay. We're, we're gonna we're gonna give them that. Okay. And took yeah. the youngest member hostage. No. Also, what? <laughs> Did the person just, was they're walking down the street, they're like, oh, look, this back gate's open. I guess I'm going to take someone hostage. I, like, I, how does that play out? I, I have to honestly say, it sounds a little sketchy to me. I'm going to go walk my dog. Right. Give me this one bottle. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Maybe he's not so friendly with these people. Continue with the story. Okay. Give me your money, he said, holding his gun to, oh, here you go, holding his gun to the head of a 14-year-old girl. What the hell is she doing out at midnight? Drinking wine. Or I'll start shooting. Sounds terrifying. Yeah, I mean, I would give the person money. Yes. Because I don't carry cash. Well, he actually, yes. But they only had a bottle of wine. The other you guest bought a wallet. To the party. <laughs> the other guests, including the girl's parents, were frozen in shock, unable to process the dire situation. Until until one of the women broke the tension. We were just finishing dinner. Why don't you have a glass of wine with us? <laughs> I mean, that is pure hostage negotiation at its finest. I must be a Napa. <laughs> right? We don't, we don't have any shootings in Napa because when people come with guns, we're like, here, have a glass of wine. Have a glass of wine. And like, have a glass yeah, of wine to help your kid get to college. So, as the story continues, <laughs> miraculously, it worked. The armed would-be robber accepted the glass that was poured to him, and a second, mm -hmm. and a third. It was only one bottle. <laughs> 
and somehow, strangely enough, changed his original, <laughs> I can't even say this, changed his original request from money to give me hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Did he still do that at, at gunpoint? I'm guessing this gun was still there. I'm guessing he still had the 14-year-old, you know, in front of him to protect him from any other danger. Gun to her head. Maybe he made the 14-year-old. How, how, how are you? Okay, so I'm just trying to play this out. I'm like, I'm making right. him. I'm gonna have him have the 14-year-old give him the sippy cup. Oh, okay, got it. I was just figuring out how that was playing out. Okay, so he's got her around, gun she's to head. She's up. got the glass and she's bringing the wine up to his mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, but after the third one, you know, he kind of reconsidered. Money. Oh, these people were really nice and shared their three glasses oh. of wine out of a bottle. That's pretty. Right. That's that's pretty nice, you know. Um, and now all he wants is hugs. Just, just give me some hugs. I mean, that's got to be some good yellowtail. <laughs> I, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. My other question is, um, how long was this guy walking his dog? Long enough for this uh, guy to drink three glasses of wine. But maybe, yeah. he was, he, maybe he was like people in tasting rooms that are like. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Versus. That 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 could be. That could be. Because, I mean, maybe like. Maybe he was. You know, it sounded like he wanted hugs all along, but he wanted attention. Yeah. He just, he, yeah, he, he heard, the, he heard the, the party and he in the back. And he had to FOMO. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, all right, I have my gun. I wasn't invited. I'm going to get money. And then they're like, join us. I mean, that's they're, really they're all like, I wanted. And that's all he really wanted. This is, okay. What I always tell people, wine, it truly brings people together. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. wine so many stories are at the life. end of an empty bottle. So exactly. many stories at the end of an empty bottle. Mm -hmm. It is true. I, I, also, I don't recommend if you are being more of a good point just to offer wine. Um, but if you got a bottle in hand, it's worth a shot. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, what What could go wrong? What could go wrong? You would get shot to death. Well, only no, the 14-year-old. Only the 14-year-old. Right. All right. So let, let's see how this, let's see how this moved on. Okay. The dinner party guests were more than happy to comply. And after each one had paid the robber, he only wanted hugs, but they ended oh, up, they you know what? Hugs. Oh, paid with hugs. Yeah. See, oh, they, okay. they, it was like a play on, oh, oh. Gosh, I just want hugs. It is, I have to say paid is in quotes. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So thank you. Thank you for scaring me. Thank you for holding my daughter at that point. Thank right. you. Um, so after each one had paid, the robber wandered off with one more glass. A Bordeaux in hand. Oh, well, shit. The I mean, Bordeaux, that's, that changes the whole story. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And he saw it and he was like, oh, yeah, that's a tour. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You probably don't have enough cash that equals what that bottle's worth. Yeah, that that is true. That That's true. It It could depend on that. But then again, would the guy walking the dog leave if that was the bottle he was opening? Yeah, I also find it strange again that he was gone this whole time. I bet you, this is just my hypothesis. And I could be wrong. They could all be living happy lives, you know, this many years later. But um, he probably thought he was going to rob his friends with that guy as a partner. And the guy was like, these people are actually pretty friggin' awesome. I'm just gonna drink with them and then be like, you'll have to like uh, blur this out. Yeah. I got the one. I got hugs. 
And yeah, I got hugs and wine, and then he left. All right, the guy comes back with his dog. I just opened up a $900 bottle of wine expecting to get all of this money back, and boom, boom, yeah. nothing. You got hugs. <laughs> hugs, not murder. <laughs> But you know what? The group waited until he was gone. Then they called the cops on him. Well, I mean, that's a but rational by the time the cops arrived, do. he was gone. Well, yeah, because, I mean, while he's still sitting there, even if he's getting hugs, he has a gun. You probably aren't going to be like, hey, just hang out. We'll open another bottle. We're going to call the cops. <laughs> We're going to call the, you know, the Metro police and have them come and get you. All right. So I know I'm kind of focusing in on this, which I probably shouldn't be. But so he had four glasses of wine. So he had the entire bottle. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it must have just freshly been opened or everybody else was finishing their glasses. And so... Yeah, he came in at the right time. Again, this, this is why I know it's got to be orchestrated. It's absolutely, absolutely. There's no way, right? He drank that entire Bordeaux bottle, that entire. I really hope that the owner with that dog has spoiled wine for the rest of his life. <laughs> you know, that's karma for wanting to shoot your friend's daughter for some cash. That is, that is true. That is true. I, I just, I don't know. You know what what happens in day. D.C. doesn't surprise me these days. You think left or right bank would have been worth more hugs? Ooh, definitely left bank unless it was, you know, Chateau Margot or, or, or no, Petrus. You know, oh. if it was Petru, no, Petrus. Petrus would have been like, oh. yeah. More than hugs, man. Dude. I would have been getting fresh for, for some uh, Oh my god. Oh my god. I can honestly say I've never shared wine with a uh, well, I've you never actually been armed person? I've never actually been in an armed situation, but <laughs> knock on wood. Knock on wood. Absolutely, absolutely. Um all right, so we're going to jump ahead to 2018. We're going to come a little oh, bit okay. closer. Yeah. A little bit closer to today's. Uh, 2018 pretty well. Yeah. Um, on the morning, and I must admit, this one is not as dramatically written. Okay, so that first one, that first one was actually from the Seattle Times. Oh. Okay. Um, not sure it occurred in Seattle, but. It was it was from the yeah. Seattle Times. Um, this one is much uh, kind of more intense, but not as dramatically written. Okay. Okay. On the morning of January tenth, two thousand eighteen, one northern Russian man. I'm going to say this man is my hero before we even get into it. I, <laughs> I kind of want to meet this man because I, I like him. You, you just you just have to like this guy. Okay. What, Igor. what? Is his name Igor? I picture his name being uh, Igor. Igor. Be <laughs> See? <laughs> it doesn't say his name, but oh. that's the name I came up with. <laughs> one northern Russian man apparently wanted his New Year's celebration to last all month. <laughs> Finding his stock of alcohol running dangerously low and himself dangerously close to sobriety, he set out on a quest for more. I'm pretty sure we've all been there. We have. And when a Russian gets dangerously low on alcohol, what does that actually mean? The world is coming to an end. <laughs> right. But like, how many like handles of vodka are still in your freezer? Right. There, there might only be four left in his freezer. Well, shit, he better get out. And get some more. Get going, get going, get going. Okay. So unfortunately, he's it was a little too early for these stores to be open. Okay. And he had no Pringles. <laughs> 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 I 
And there's no Walmarts in northern Russia that I know there, of. I don't think there are Walmarts in northern Russia. Um, <laughs> I'm just picturing her on her cart. I still love this woman. I still love her. <laughs> She's still a hero to me. I know. And I kind of want to get this Russian man and her together. Just, together. just, mm -hmm. just to meet, you know. Exactly, a power couple, a power couple. Um, so it was a bit too early. So he decided that he had to take matters into his own hands. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to open a store for himself. Okay. So he left, he left the store because it was closed. Right. He went somewhere and stole a tank. <laughs> Wait, so, so, you know, it's it's twilight, you know, or, you know, early morn. Um, sun's not quite up over the, the tundra. and No roosters have cock a doodle doo yet. No. Nope. The, the storefronts are dark in the town of... <laughs> and there's just an empty tank sitting there. Uh, apparently so. So he stole the tank. As one does. When and, one's thirsty. Okay. She stole the shopping, the, the electric car and thingy. And he, he stole, stole the tank. tank. It is a match made in heaven. It is. It is. Okay. So <laughs> it, there was a training ground. So that's where he got it from. Okay. okay. He then drove the tank through the forest. Yeah, there's a forest. There's a forest. <laughs> um, over a few cars that were in his way, because I guess he couldn't no really stop him from getting his vodka. And then into the store. Yeah. Okay. And to top it off, somebody happened to be there taping it on their phone. <laughs> oh, did that seriously go viral? Can we find that? Um, I'm pretty sure you can because I, I kind of remember when this came out. And there is a video of not through the forest and not over the cars, but into the store. Okay. I, did see, I did see a video into the store. Um, so um, the, the innocent bystander... <laughs> who just happened to be there at far too early for these stores to be open. So what is he doing at the, in the, in the right, parking exactly. lot? Um, when they interviewed him, he said he seemed kind of drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Quote. Kind of. Kind of drunk. Um, but here's my question. I've been in a tank. Have you ever been in a tank? I don't remember if I've been in a tank like it, like on a school field trip to like a museum or something. Right. But we'll we'll say sure. They're they're really tiny, but you're inside. So he's driving the tank inside. How did this dude know he seemed kind of drunk? Or were they the tanks where you can also like you're kind of like out of it, like you're. No, well, that's the guy who does the, 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 the shooting no, that's guy. That's like the gunner. Okay. That's the gunner. That's the gunner. Okay. But so he he reported that he seemed to be drunk. But then he he oh I guess he climbed out of the yeah. tank to go into get the store and came out with his big heist. Which was one bottle of wine. <laughs> What bottle, what bottle it was, but I, I'm going to go, it probably wasn't Patricia. I'm going to say, okay, Yellowtail. <laughs> One bottle. And that's really all he needed. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to go big, you know, you're going to steal a tank, it's at least... D two <laughs> bottles, a magnum. <laughs> right. you want to You want to at least double fist it. Correct. Did he drive off in the tank? Like, did he return home um, in the tank, or did he just like walk? 
that's the end of the story. They were not, we do not have the happy ending that we have in Seattle. Huh. But, what bottle of wine? Not even vodka. Like, I would, I would assume. That would be like vodka. vodka, because that's what they, that's yeah. a now, mean stereotype. Not everybody in Russia drinks vodka. That is true. We apologize for that stereotype. Please don't mess with our elections again. Um, <laughs> so, um, I'm never being invited back. <laughs> <laughs> One bottle of bottle. One bottle of wine. You know what? It, I've been super thirsty before, and if I had a tank, I probably would have done the same thing. Not going to lie. But one bottle? No. Definitely two. Definitely two. Absolutely. But the fact that he still stole the tank. That's like, kudos you know, point, man. Right. That is... That's that he went into the training center through the forest, over the tundra, and into the small village, um, knocking down the storefront. So, it reminds me of the movie Red Dawn. Kind of, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Just without the wine. They went in to go get guns. They This guy just went right. to go get a bottle of wine. But here's the thing. Did the training center leave the keys in the tank? Yeah, I, I don't really necessarily know how tanks turn on. Um, it's got to be some sort of key. It can't just be whoever go pops in there. Well, I, it could be, like, just the push button, but I suppose you still need the key. <laughs> you need the fab. <laughs> the key fab. Bob, yeah. Bob. <laughs> I'm just trying to think, like, uh, you need the key fob for the tank. Um, yeah. Well, there's just, like, the little, like, a little switch that you just... Turn, like, Turn the Terrible Tank? Did you ever play that game? No. Um, terrible Tank? No. Turn the Terrible Tank it was a great game. Actually, I would love to play that while I'm drinking with you. Okay. Let's get. Let's find it on eBay. Yeah, it, it's really good. It's, you shoot these little, like, BBs to turn your tank, or to turn the tank so it goes and smashes your opponent's, like, little... Uh, oh, my God. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah. So. That sounds like so much fun. I know. Tanks and wine. It's a story in the making. I love it. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. All right. Um, I is this is this the one? Okay, this is the one, Nick. Okay. Um. See these so people. Not wearing pants. So if this is the one, this is what's making me just. I'm so ready. So these people apparently are very familiar with us because their first sentence is, the world of wine is weird and wacky. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is, dear writer. And full of wild potions. I think we should sue them because apparently they stole that from, from us. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. So do you know that there is um, a meteorite wine? No. Like bottled, it's made from a meteorite? Bottled in 2012, the wine was slowly aged with a space rock that crashed to Earth around 6,000 years ago. Inside the bottle? In, I, I'm guessing it was aged, so I'm guessing maybe in barrel? Okay. Um, Interesting. And their tagline... Um, says the meteorite gives wine a livelier taste. Huh. So, would you drink a wine? I mean, I, I'm going to go with there might be a little bit of radiation and stuff coming off know. of that meteorite. Do meteorites carry radiation? It's just kind of like a rock. I don't know. Didn't it, like, turn the Hulk into, like, you know, Dr. Banner into the Hulk or something? I don't know. Aren't you an academic? <laughs> um, I'm pretty I'm sure, pretty, I'm pretty I'm sure in black, those things that land are never good. I mean, it's super kitschy. Um, 
you have wine and bourbon barrels. You have um, there's other kitschy stuff. So why not meteorite wine? Mm. And it's, it's like a minerality. It brings a minerality. There you to go. The, to the minerality. World. Talk about terroir. Exactly. Right. It's out of this world. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. You beat me. You beat me to the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, I suppose that's what, like, a, how it aliens. I, mean, I truly believe there's life outside this planet. How do they make wine? They, you know, they're drinking. You know, they're drinking wine. And instead of like concrete eggs, it's probably like meteorite eggs. All right. But would it be a meteorite there? No, I think it would just be a rock. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't think I would say yes to a to a meteorite aged wine. There's something about Yeah, but like I don't know. You people have moon rocks. Yeah. I guess they you're right. They don't necessarily, like, turn your dream and into, I mean, those are steroids. Um, this is just like a helpless little rock. Um, now, where it landed, that would determine whether. That's a good point. I mean, if it landed in, like, a cow pasture, probably no. Not. <laughs> like, um, Barnyard. Right. Like in a, in a vineyard in Napa or Bordeaux, sure. Like I'm like put that one right. in that wine. All right. So do you think this guy was like, you know, he was he was home one day and this meteorite just like crashed on his property and he was like, dude, I'm gonna make some wine with this meteorite. <laughs> yeah, I, I. Yeah, but then that also brings conjures up images of uh, Men in Black when the meteorite what? actually lands in that farmer's yard, and then he turns into like that. Wait, a cockroach. Yeah, he's a cockroach. I don't want to drink cockroach wine. No. <laughs> no. We'll leave that for we'll leave that to Yellowstone. <laughs> No bias. If you love, if you like Yellowtail, you keep drinking it. You drink, what, you drink whatever you are happy with. I firmly believe everybody has a different palate. I just absolutely. like making fun. Yeah, absolutely. So, and being invited. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Along the weird wines, um, Omerto, O-M-E-R-T-O, those damn Canucks, um, Canadian wine, made wine out of fermented tomatoes. Okay. A lot of that's called the Bloody Mary. Oh, probably yes. See, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I just, uh -uh. tomato juice, especially like fermented tomato juice, mm -mm. Nope. I hate well, I don't those. drink I don't drink Bloody Marys, but oh. but I could see kind of that makes sense. But this was wine. They called it wine. Right, because any liquid from fermented whatever. Can, <laughs> wait, can you do that one more time for for the listen for the listeners who aren't seeing the actual. <laughs> They'll just have to go to YouTube and fast forward to 49 minutes. Watch him go. <laughs> <laughs> All Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It, it's got to taste like V8, but a little yeah. bit like bit more so vinegary. All right, so I'm going to say when when I worked for, I won't say their co the company, when I was the microbiologist for that food company, um, I was responsible for tea, which might narrow down what company that was. Um, and 
we I was responsible for ready to drink. So the ones that were in the glass that you opened up and you just chug a lug. And we had a, a wee bit issue of a microbial problem in there. Um, but <laughs> A little bit of a microbial problem. But the good part of it was that there was a whole bunch of yeast in there in the tea. So the yeast and the sugar in the tea. So you invented kombucha? <laughs> I think I did. I think I did. And. I might have supposed to have been, you know, you have to open these bottles and sample them, right? You pipette out the samples or whatever, but you're taking out like 30 milliliters and that's it's that's a 32 ounce bottle or 16 ounce bottle. Yeah. That's a lot of leftover. Um, there might have been a bit of, hey, yeast, sugar, fermentation. Tea wine. Tea wine. Tea wine. Um, and we might have had a might have had a bit of a party a few times in the in the lab. Um, may have, may have. I am not saying that we did, um, but it, it it actually after a few sips it actually made was not as good as after you, you know, the first few sips were much better than as you tried to drink it like as if you were drinking wine. So I can't imagine fermented tomato like that does not sound appealing to me as and they're they're selling it as a wine well okay i don't think you gave it enough milk because it's kind of like the old adage drink till we are to is cute this is drink till it tastes good oh okay i missed i missed that 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 hump <laughs> All right. Um, uh, no. The tea started to make you feel sick. I'm not gonna lie. The tea kind of made you start to feel sick. It was like, oh, you know. It was a more. I think it. Well, it was more along the lines of Brett than. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. You know. Once Earl you got past the. Hmm. What. I said Earl Grey and horseshit. My yeah. two favorite flavors. Yeah. Woo. Kimchi. Well, whatever. I don't know how you say that stuff, but yes, that's what that is, right? Mm -hmm. Your kimchi. Kimchi. Kombucha. Kombucha. Oh. I just stay away from that stuff. It has All right. Even it. It's weird. All right. Continuing with the odd wine ingredients. Yes. I can't even. <laughs> well, you already went that disgusting gesture, so go ahead. <laughs> this winery has created, as they call it, the ever popular three penis wine. Three penis wine. A Chinese concoction. Oh, here's my surprise face. <laughs> Made of the genitalia mm -hmm. of dogs, seals, and deer. All three are delicacies. They are. Now, my question is, why those three? Now, if you're going to make a wine, mm -hmm. I, wouldn't you kind of go along with penis, okay? Yeah, yeah, wouldn't yeah. you go along with, like, more bang for your buck type thing? And instead of a dog, seal, and deer, why wouldn't you go with, like, I don't know, a horse, a whale, and... I don't know what else yeah. is up there in well, I don't know the size of their fermentation vat. So you have to take into that into account. Two, it's not just you know, um 
those animals may have some spiritual thing, um, and three, those penises just taste better. <laughs> Are you talking from experience? <laughs> no, I, well, how do you know the size of a deer penis? I mean, I don't. Have you seen a deer penis? I have. Dear listeners, <laughs> question. We had deer. <laughs> we had deer in our backyard all the time. And they just walk around with their penises hanging out? They get a little happy. Dear listeners, Lori <laughs> just admitted to being a dear uh, boy. Where? Yeah. Hey. All right. It's okay. Wait. There's no judgment. Um, so, But seriously, think about, like, a, a horse. Yeah. A whale. I mean, the, I, I, I see. I don't want to be. I don't want to be mean I don't here. Know but are whalers though? I don't think that's a, com a country that is big well, on no. whales. But no. they probably have excess seals laying around. I don't know. And again, I think there are some parts that eat dog. I don't want to Do, Does China have deer? Are there Chinese deer? <laughs> I don't mean it that way. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I would assume so. Um, I think they live everywhere. I okay. Mean, they, have, they have like deer farms in New Zealand, so why can't they have like all right just yeah, like I so guess, I, are are they this is are they fresh <laughs> or are they raised for their penis meat? I, 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 or their just penis? Like, are they slot? Like, is it like castration where they just take it all off in one foul swoop? Or, oh, this is so fascinating. Uh, but I'm, I'm just not necessarily like, all right, uh, I'm going with the go big or go home concept. That's what's in my head. But yeah. why dog seals and deer? Like, there's why not penguins and you know penguins in China. I right, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. But I mean like Can you imagine these like little panda? Like, why not a panda penis? I think they are uh endangered or oh they're small. I just learned something new. Panda penises are small. Thank you, Lori. Uh, <laughs> just so anybody who's listening, I'm a biologist by trade. There was a lot of science research. Not that we studied penis, but this is, I think I need to mark this one. Biologist. <laughs> I think I need to mark this one as um, not safe for work. Not safe for work. <laughs> Um, so, again, how do they, play, like, are they salty? I don't know. Do you think our friends at, uh, I always butcher the name, Tapasino. Oh, I, I know, I know. Do they import us some of this penis wine? I don't know. Maybe they can research into it. But, you know, our friends over... Jeff, the other Jeff, yeah, right, and John over at We Like Drinking, yeah, you know, they they've had beer that is from smoked whale testicles. Oh, so what were their thoughts? Uh, I don't know. We might have to collaborate on this one. Right. Whale testicles. Whale testicles. Not not the penis though. This is specifically penis. The shaft. The shaft. The shaft. <laughs> Um, huh. Okay, I mean, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> and now I'm stuck on the, the animal. Like, the, the seal probably gives, like, a saline-ish kind of, 
like sea water, sea salt nest. It's very nice. It reminds me of something from like the Rio Spicha. <laughs> just like sailing kind of. Like, you have just ruined Albarino for me. <laughs> dog. I, I just don't even know what a dog would bring. But, like, my, I get, in all complete seriousness, that combination. It must have been tested. I mean, Jeez. again, it has to do with size or the amount of, like, corpus spongiosum, corpus, you know, cavernosum, like, the amount of tissue and what each brings to the party. Do you yeah, think they do blind tasting of too. which combination, which combinations are the best? Yeah, because I mean, maybe um, like a horse is just too musty, like it gives like a bready um, ness, and then like a whale. Again, I don't even know if a whale would fit in a fermentation bar. <laughs> All right. So let's go, let's think about this pure wine wise, right? A deer forest floor. We're talking Pinot esque. Correct. You've already went with the seals with the sea and the, with the sea, sea and just kind of Alvarino esque. Dogs. Um, Ashley Furniture. Um, I just. I, I think of a household. Um, yeah. Well, um, well, well, baking spices. Baking spices. All right, I can kind of, I can kind of see that all coming together. I can kind of see that all coming together. Now, is this a red or a white wine? Um, it does not say. Um, it just doesn't. The, the, like the sea. The sea one throws me off. Plus you know, four sports don't work in a white wine. No. The do the dogs and the deer to me scream red. No. But yeah. the seal the seal is more of a white. Mm -mm. No. Ah, that's a good question. It doesn't say the name of the winery. Um unlike the fermented tomatoes who was very proud to say their name. Um it doesn't say the name of the winery. But, yeah, that's a good question if it's a red or a white because dogs and deer do seem to be red. Um, yeah, it, they scream red wine. And deer is thinking Pinot to me. Yeah. Poor, poor. I just think of home, and then when I think of home, I get, like, warm and cozy. Okay, it is October, so I'm going to go with Merlot Mima. Dog penis reminds me of Merlot. No, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Oh, no, no, I know, I know. It actually will be a grassy note because so think Sauvignon Blanc. So maybe these are white. It's in the yard because dogs play in yards. So maybe they are a white. Right. So then what? So what would the deer? You could still get like a, a pine kind of like or like maybe. A, a eucalyptus is I don't know, but I think you're right. I think it's a white. I think it's a white. Yeah, definitely. We got we got that pine. We've got the grass, or or <laughs> might be even too far for me. The dog ate the cat, so there's cat pee. <laughs> And then the seal. I think it's a white. You still get Sauvignon Blanc. So what do you get? Grass or cat urine? Basically, it's, dog penis adds a grassy note to your wine. It's Sauvignon Blanc. We we have deciphered the penis wine. Yes. Yes. And I I don't know where else we could go after penis wine. So I think. This might be the yeah, end of. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, 
Lori, I go back to her window and spy on deer. <laughs> and I'm gonna Come go to the on! Come on, I'm going to show you, I'm going to send you videos of all video. the deer. I don't want, you don't send me video of deer. Of all the deer that are in my backyard before I had to sell my beautiful house in North Halden that I miss immensely to have my house in Fresno. There's no deer in Fresno. There is no deer in Fresno. There, there is a statue of a deer in a Fresno that Vegas feels obligated to stalk every time he sees it. But <laughs> but there's a little, there's a statue of a of a baby deer, a fawn, lying at a base of a tree. And every time we walk past it, he stalks it. I think he has flashbacks to when he has to get the deer out of our property. But it could it could take ten minutes for us to get past that statue. He's like that damn deer's not moving. It's a brave deer. It's a brave deer. But anyways, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on with me because you know what? You made my night. You always make my night when we're together. Night? Am I invited back? You are always invited back. Okay, good. You're always invited back. Um, and you know. I think I think I need I think I'm gonna go out and get a flour tortilla. <laughs> so that's an inside joke, people. Very sorry for that, but before we sign off, can you just show me what it's like to to drink tomato wine again? <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Yeah, no, Again, people, if you would like to see that, go to the YouTube video at about 105, 107. <laughs> this one is definitely not suitable for work. <laughs> no. No. Viewers under the age of 18. There we go. Although we did talk about the 14-year-old girl who was held at gunpoint and then got hugs. So we, maybe we can drop that to 14. <laughs> if you're old enough to be like held at gunpoint, you're old enough to watch Lori right. choke on. <laughs> if you're old enough to be and up at beer. midnight at a party where they serve one bottle of wine. It was Bordeaux. You're good to go. It was Bordeaux. It is all good to go. Well, so, don't just bring one bottle to the party. That is the lesson of the night. Do not bring just one bottle to the party. That is. No. No. But anyway, thank you everybody for listening to this episode of Wacky World of Wine. We may have gone off the rails a bit, but I don't know. When Nick and I get together, that's kind of what happens, um, which is why I think Mike doesn't ever want to be with us when we're together. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike's comment when I came back from breakfast was two hours of breakfast. <laughs> I'm like, oh. we're, we're waiting for him to come back and take our order after we sent him away. <laughs> that was our fault. That was our fault. He, he came four times and we sent him away. That was that was our fault. That definitely was our fault. We will, we will give Flower Tortilla Man another chance. Um, so anyway, thank you for joining Wacky World of Wine, and thank you, Nick, for for coming tonight because you know you always make my night, and I always love being with you, I even if it's virtually. You. Always even. a pleasure being on the Wine Writers Wrap Up. <laughs> it's just me. It's you. <laughs> Anyway, have a great night, everybody. See ya. <laughs>